We continue our breakdown of the 2023 NHL prospect pools. We're going to be continuing with picks 29 through 27, namely the Bruins, the Golden Knights, and the Panthers, all coming up on Locked On NHL Prospects. You are Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On this podcast, we break down everything prospects related for you five days a week. During the summertime, it'll be three times a week, though. My name is Hattie Kalakesh. I'm joined by Sebastian High. Both work for Dauber Prospects, but also bring you this podcast. Now, Sebastian, we'll be continuing with the uh, top, well, we'll pick 29 to 27 of our top 32 for uh, the prospect pool rankings we started off with uh the isles the lightning uh and the pittsburgh penguins and now we're moving on to uh we'll start with boston here at 29 i know you wanted them a bit lower than than 29 uh you thought they were kind of a bottom three ranking i can see where you're coming from but i still believe deeply and profoundly in uh what fabian lucelle brings to the game um what do you like about lucelle and is he for you kind of the standout prospect in boston he, he is the only prospect that excites me in this pool. And I think that that's yeah. one of the reasons I wanted them a bit lower is if we're ranking entire pools, I want some semblance of depth. And yeah. uh, some of the other teams that we mentioned earlier had more depth, but LaSalle is the best player that we've looked at so far. So I'm totally fine with this. and not at all against it. Uh, and, and they were also, I mean, like, like, my, bot, my my personal bottom four teams are the bottom four teams that we have in our collective rankings. So I I really can't complain. Uh, Lacelle is is exceptionally skilled and a a really intelligent offensive player. He knows how to break down defensive structures. He's a tremendous skater. The skating ability mm-hmm. is really impressive, and uh, he, he's a fantastic playmaker. He can score goals. Not the strongest defensive player. There are some definite question marks in terms of of um perhaps his off puck engagement his defensive play uh and and there's been a lot of question marks around character things which we're not going to delve into because at least i don't have all the information here but that is also a little asterisk for me on lasalle as i've I've heard some things that aren't the greatest but i really again cannot confirm those so we're gonna we're not gonna go in in down that rabbit hole uh but i think that may have maybe a bit more hesitant to to rank them highly based off of just him but Mm -hmm. in just a hockey context this is a really skilled player and uh there's a reason that 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 he was always been a bit selfish with the puck on the ice because He's really, really good with the puck on his stick. Uh, he can yep. really make things happen. Uh, on a from a hockey standpoint, he fell way too far in the draft. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, he he to me is really the most, uh, by far the most interesting player in Boston's pool. Yeah, no, I, I I definitely agree. I feel like with Lucell, you're getting a player who's consistently going to be upping the pace of play whenever he gets to the, the puck. He loves to push the pace. He loves to accelerate out of receptions and generally makes the pace of play on the ice faster every time he gets the puck for me it's just a matter of does he learn the ability to control his speed in a way where he's using it efficiently rather than just accelerating every play because there are instances where using a skating in order to slow down the play to take a step back to delay and then accelerate quickly at, at, at just the right moment in order to get past the player those are the elements of his game that I want to see improved. I, I remember one of the earlier episodes before he came on, um, I was talking about Lucelle and comparing that with a guy like Thierry Henry in soccer and the the development that he followed um, in INF Clairefontaine, which is one of the best development programs in all of international soccer. And he distinctly mentioned that the thing that made him so good was that his coaches forced him to not not beat every player with speed. They force mm-hmm. him to adapt, to find different ways to score, to find different ways to be effective. And that's what Lucell needs to do. He needs to face scenarios where he can't use a speed in order to, to overwhelm players with, with pace. That's what I'm looking for from Lucell, but I really like the skill set. Another player I'd mention would probably be Mason Lorai. That's the only other player that I'd say has, you know, kind of 
is up there with me in terms of interest for players in the in the in the Bruins pool. I really I, I, like when. Yeah, so sorry. Go go ahead. I'll I'll say my my piece afterwards. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I really like what Mason Laurie brings to the game. He's a big guy, but doesn't rely exclusively on his strength and size. I really like the offensive game on him. He's a very surprisingly shifty and elusive and intelligent, you know, crafty player with the puck, which I was really surprised to see once he got drafted by Boston because Boston likes they like their defensemen a certain way. And when they're small, they're, they still play that certain way, that physical you know, in your face, never leaving you space type of type of player. He's certainly that, but he's also got some crafty elements to his game that I really like. Very good blue line shooter. I wonder about the deception at times that does lack in certain elements, but the craftiness and transition is really evident. And that's one thing I really like out of his game. So he's one guy that I would put in that category in terms of the players I'm interested in. He's definitely not on Lucelle's talent level at all but he's certainly a very interesting profile of player that i was kind of surprised to see the bruins pick up and once they picked him up i was surprised to see what kind of player he was once i started delving into his game yeah i think one, one more name i'm gonna throw in there too is brandon Busey. i think uh obviously he had a like it was coming out season last year right and yeah. but i've watched some of his ahl tape as well i i've been really impressed with what i've seen yeah. from him and goalies develop weirdly so i think i'm a mm -hmm. bit more open to those like out of nowhere players kind of sticking to it when they're goalies compared to skaters because yeah. we see it happening a lot more often whereas with players sometimes you have that breakthrough season or that one-off exceptional productive season and then mm -hmm complete regression back to the norm whereas with goalies it's a bit more it's, it's a bit more wacky uh and and i think that Busey could continue on that trend uh but he's he's the last of like the the quote-unquote like really interesting prospects but but boston has quite a few names that we find intriguing rather than yeah. perhaps promising so what are some of your yeah. intriguing talents here Definitely Matthew Protra out of the Guelph Storm yeah. and Beckett Hendrickson, who uh, will be developing with the, the Sioux Falls Stampede next year. Those are the two guys that are very particular in the way that they play. Beckett Hendrickson is one of the best playmakers out of last year's draft, but it's just outside of that. Even his vision itself, it's his, his craftiness, his setups for his passes are kind of iffy, but I really like the, the ability to manipulate defenders to send him one way past the other, and especially the accuracy and precision and his ability to spot lanes that other players wouldn't. I really like that out of him. It's just outside of that skill set, what does he bring? He's not necessarily the quickest skater, not necessarily the best defensively, not necessarily the most physical player. There's a lot of areas in this game that are lacking, but if you can build around his specialized skill set as a playmaker and make him just a pure connector on the line. You can pair him with a sniper and just have a fantastic one, two punch of um, one guy who sets up no matter what happens. And one guy who scores, no matter what happens, it's a great lethal duo. You can build off of that and building off of that. We've got Matthew Potra, who for me is a very good scorer, decent two way player, but none of his, nothing in his game necessarily stands out. Um, he's a very kind of Jack of all trades type of player. Um, and you can stick him in any role. He'll probably do a decent job. I just have a, a lot of trouble projecting him to the NHL as anything past a third liner. I don't know if you agree with that. I I, I don't even know if third liner is what I'd project. I think fourth line is most yeah. likely. Uh, and third line would be optimistic. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Yeah. I fully agree. So those are the two guys that kind of put in that category. Maybe Jackson Edward as well. Another defenseman out of the Vegas Golden... Uh, out of the, wow, the London Knights. Uh, and he's one guy who... I've been on and off in terms of my viewings of him. I've watched him a lot in passing, and I feel like every game I'm watching a different player. So I'm having trouble nailing down what he does best, but I see a lot of areas in this game that you could develop into something. So he, he's another one of those players who's kind of a template player. You can pretty much turn him into anything. But I think the the quickest and most straightforward path to the NHL is probably as a rush defending kind of two-way guy on the third line. That's probably what you're getting out of Edward. But like, like we mentioned, a lot of intriguing players, a lot of... Uh, kind of experiments, but nothing really yeah. concrete. I, I think Reed Dick and Cole Spice are another two players that yeah. are notable. I think I think Reed Dick is an interesting goalie prospect. Uh, decently athletic, but he needs to learn to control his movements a bit more. Mm -hmm. And I think he's progressed decently since his draft year. Uh, and Cole Spicer had a really, really tough freshman season uh, in college. Only so six up... points in 30 games? Yep. Yep. Yeah, uh, three goals, three assists, and I think 32 games. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but he was really only put in a depth role. And I did like what I saw of him with the NTDP. Uh, yeah. Now I'm not nearly as hopeful as I was a year ago on his on his standpoint, but I, I still think he's worth a mention here. Absolutely. A great, a great two-way player, but like you mentioned, a rough year. All right, so that was Team 29 in our top 32 prospect pool rankings, the Boston Bruins. Now we're going to be moving on to Team 28, the Vegas Golden Knights. But before we get into that, Sebastian, tell us about our sponsor for today's episode. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your original betting amount back in bonus bets, up to $200. That's right. For just a $20 bet, you can get up to $200 back in free bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 bucks that you can spend on anything from over and unders to money lines to who you think is going to swing the first home run of a game. All on an app that's safe, secure, easy to use, and best of all, you get your winnings instantly. There's no better place to bet MLB than on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So sign up today and get uh, and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 back in free bonus bets. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Alrighty, so moving on to our team number 28 in our top 32 prospect pool rankings for the NHL. We're going to be talking about the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, Vegas has a decent pool with, I, I think, a decent amount of depth, nothing overwhelming. Um, but for me, it's the prospects at the top end that I like very much. Um, nothing really for me to the level of a Fabian Lucell, but a lot of decent bets to to have kind of that second pair, second line, middle six upside. So. Um, who's your favorite out of this bunch so far? I think it has to be Brendan Brisson. Uh, he's kind of the last remaining player that was among those first uh, Vegas Golden Knights first round draft picks that has remained and hasn't been traded away. Uh, <laughs> but he is an exceptional shooter. He has a great one timer. Uh, I thought he was excellent in Michigan. I thought his, his debut season in the AHL was perhaps a little bit more lukewarm than I'd expected or hoped. Yep. But this is still a player with significant middle six upside down the middle as a center, mainly as a goal scorer, but he's a decent distributor of the puck. Uh, he can he can drive a line uh, in that middle six role. I think if you get a line driving 3C out of him, who could be a PP1 or PP2 trigger man, I think you're getting a decent, de decent piece with Brisson. Now, there's a reason that Vegas is lower down on our rankings if that is their best prospect. But I do quite like him, and I don't see any other names in this pool that quite come close to him. For me personally, the only other player that I would have in kind of the same conversation uh, would be Lucas Calmi. For me, I'm, I'm very sold on what he brings to the game. The offensive game is off the charts. Uh, his ability to manipulate lanes, to hit players in stride, just the accuracy of his game overall. He's a very efficient distributor. His passes rarely miss the mark, and they hit players in stride in a way that they never need to really slow down. They can just put their stick on the ice and they can trust Cormier to hit him in stride, which is really, really good for breakout defensemen. I like the skating ability on Cormier as well. He's improved his defensive game a lot as well. So he's one other guy that I kind of put in that category. Uh, and for me, kind of competes with Brisson in terms of upside. I see Cormier as a potential kind of top, you know, number three, number four defenseman, a, a decent second pair guy, but a high end second pair guy, a guy who's going to be able to play on your top power play, who's going to be able to get involved offensively on your team and, and do a good job at that. Maybe Daniil Cheka and R2 Karki could be two David other guys. Edstrom. David Edstrom, Edstrom as well. Edstrom is in there. I, I like the fit with Edstrom because yeah. we, we've seen Vegas have a very clear identity for their third line for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think guys like Keegan Colasar um, and uh, players of that mold, I, I, William Carey as a fourth liner, but mm -hmm. they have some really like fun, high energy, uh, intelligent, defensively responsible players in their bottom six. And that's kind of what they've been trying to build up as their bottom six to kind of support in terms of intensity and defense when their top six can just go and score their goals. Mm -hmm. And I think Edstrom fits really nicely into that. I don't, I don't think he's going to be a top six piece, but he doesn't have to be with Vegas. They just won the cup and he yep. won't have to be a, a, a game changer for them. Absolutely. But, but this is a powerful centerman with a really good shot, especially from, from a small and medium range. Uh, I, I've liked his one-touch playmaking ability as well. I think he's improved as a distributor as the year went on. 
and he's yeah. very pro ready. Like this is a player who could be playing pretty competent NHL minutes within the next two years and getting that at with the last pick of the first round is not bad value. I thought it was a yeah. bit of a reach compared to my own board, <laughs> but Vegas is a very, is in a very different position. Like I, I rank players highly based on upside and, Clearly, they wanted their future three C with that pick, and there's there are way worse ways of being of using a, a pick in that thirty to forty range than a player that you're quite confident in could be a future third line center. So yeah. he's another name I'll throw out there as a as a top end prospect in this pool. Uh, mm-hmm. But anyone else beyond that that catches your eye? I like Jordan Gustafson personally. I, I like what he brings to the game. He was a decent bed where he was picked. Um, for, for me, he strikes me as a good connector, uh, decent defensively, nothing overwhelming. Um, about a, an above average shot, nothing overwhelming there as well, but I like the overall profile that he brings to the game. Um, for me, I, I've not really been convinced with the skating necessarily. He's a decent skater, but nothing overwhelming there either. Uh, but I just really like the the value of having a guy like that in your system in case a David Estrem works his way up to a top six somehow. Uh, and you need to fill out that bottom six center spot. He's a great bet there. Um, I also, you know, I, I personally like the R2 Karki pick. Personally, I love I, that pick. I, I like him where he was picked. Any higher, I would have been concerned. But I, I have big concerns about his defensive projectability and, and, yeah. his, and his defensive game overall. But the skating's decent. The offensive game is really overwhelmingly good. Uh, so that's one guy I, I kind of like the fact that they kind of hedge their bets on. Um, I, I like him more than you do. I think I, 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 I like them all season. Uh, I was always the one that was bringing up his names in, in our in our ranking meetings of like mm-hmm. trying to edge him up a little bit further up our board with every meeting. Uh, yeah, I I liked him more than I like Lucas Dragostevich, for instance. I think that yeah. he, his skating foundation is stronger. I like his decision making more. I think that the transition defense is less bad, which is a positive. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've I've liked. Most of what I've seen from R2 Karki, this isn't a player that I think has top pairing potential, but you don't expect mm-hmm. that in the third round. Uh, but I I think my read might be a little bit similar with as yours with Lucas Cormier, but in a more yeah. raw way. I think if Karki progresses well, this could be a number four offensive defenseman. Absolutely, which makes total sense. Uh, and a quick shout out to Daniel Cheka. I wasn't really sold with him when he was picked, uh, but I've liked some of my viewings of him later on, especially his rush defending, his ability to understand um, how to close gaps and when to close them, especially is something that I was really impressed with. So that's one other guy I'd mention. And uh, Matthias Shapovalov, last guy I'll throw in there. He's kind of fun. Yeah, definitely a fun player. Uh, that wraps it up for Vegas in our second segment. Now we're going to and, and, restart that. And that wraps it up for our second segment uh, with the Vegas Golden Knight. Now, coming up, we're going to be talking about the Florida Panthers prospect pool, and that'll be coming up on today's episode of Locked On NHL Prospects. All right, so moving on to the Florida Panthers. Now, this is a decent pool, but there's a reason they show up at 27 in our rankings. Um, I especially like the Grayson Souchin pick. I think that was one of the best picks of the draft. Uh, sure. Really, a really big fan of his game and what he brings to the game at 60, what, two, I think? 63. I think 60, it was him and Riley Height at 63. The 64. last two picks of the yeah. second round. That's true. So, yeah, 63 overall is fantastic value. I, I for sure had him in my... Like I, I thought he was going to be gone by 25, 26. He, I mean, it's astounding to me that it was picked that far. Um, I, I really like the the skating ability, the effort level, especially with Souchin. And what really surprised me as the year went on, because, you know, that's not enough for me to be a top 20 pick, right? I mean, if you're a good skater and have good effort level, but have nothing else, you're not a, you're a mid-round prospect for me. But I was, I got a lot more impressed with the goal scoring ability. I got a lot more impressed, especially with the playmaking game, the, the ability handling. to find seams and the hands, especially it's the hands are off the charts. Top five in the class. Absolutely. So that's what kind of put him in that top 20 range for me. And that's what edges Florida out uh, above uh, the Vegas Golden Knights is they have a prospect of Selchin's caliber with really high end skills. Um, a guy who could play in a top six eventually, but that's my guy for their, for their pool. Do you have anyone else that you like in that pool? You know I do. I, I'm, a, I'm a huge <laughs> fan of Mackie Samuskevich. I think he, he's probably my, my, my top prospect in this pool, but it's it's really tight. It's mm-hmm. it's quite clear to me that Souchin and Samuskevich are the two really, really interesting ones in here. Yeah. Uh, I I think I like Samuskevich's projectability a little bit more at this mm-hmm. point in time, but he's had a couple more years to develop. But kind of a similar thing, right? Undersized, but 
high energy, tremendous handling, really mm -hmm. dynamic, especially through the neutral zone. Uh, so I like him for a lot of the same reasons I like Sauchin. I just, yeah. if Sauchin is what Samuskevich is now, at Samuskevich's age, I would be happy with that result. And I think mm -hmm. that's for me the tiebreaker, where I think Samuskevich has really like continued to to improve a lot year to year. And mm -hmm. we'll see if Sauchin can match that. But mm -hmm. these are two players that I think are dynamic offensively, have second line offensive upside, could be top line players in a complementary role, but yeah. Florida doesn't really need that, right? They already have their their star players with Barkov and and Matthew Kachuk, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think both of those guys are really fun skill guys that could be second liners in the future. Hundred percent. I've always been a big big fan of Sam Muscovich. Uh, I've kind of cooled down on him a tiny bit as the years went on, uh, but I'm glad to hear that you're you're still impressed from what from what I've heard. I mean. He seems to stand out every time you watch him, which is what you want out of every a prospect, time. right? It, exactly. He's, he's so much fun to watch. And I mean, Michigan always had a lot of really good players, but mm -hmm. really without fail, every time I watched Michigan when he was still there, uh, he was a player that caught my eye, like over guys like Adam Fantilli. I'm not saying yeah. he projects better than Fantilli, but he was a more dynamic Exciting. shift to shift yeah. college player last season than Fantilli was. And He's so much fun. I, I, there are a few players I, I enjoy watching more play the game of hockey. He's so creative, so skilled, so smooth in his movements. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a lot of fun to watch for sure. Absolutely. It's funny you say that because I had the exact same feeling scouting him in his draft year with the Chicago Steel. Oh, yeah. I had him ranked above Matt Coronado. Uh, I was a really, really big fan of his game, of his skating, playmaking, handling kind of combination. It really made him stand out. So really glad to hear that's kept going on and having watched him last year with with michigan with you know the brindley's and the uh, the gavin brindley's and the adam Fantilli's and all that from this year you can really tell that there was a progression um i'm just not convinced that it was steep enough of progression to put him in kind of the 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 top six kind of mention but i really really like the game and if it projects better than i hope which i do hope because i love Sam Savage <laughs> and i love players who play like him i'd be very happy with that um, another player I do want to mention in this kind of category, well, not necessarily in this category. There's a very clear top two. I think we can both agree on that. But yeah, I, for sure. I, I really, really like um, Albert Vickman and Luke Coughlin, who are two defensemen that they fun. added. Vickman's very fun. Coughlin is as well. Luke Coughlin uh, played most of the year in, well, he played the entire year in the QMJHL and really struck me as a very energetic and dynamic defenseman who loves to bring a lot of pace to the game. Um, you'll see him drop the shoulder a lot in transition, which is pretty fun. Uh, he'll he'll get involved in transitions, push past players, and kind of push through the neutral zone. Doesn't really seem as comfortable carrying the puck into the offensive zone. Likes to he likes to delegate before hitting the offensive blue line and kind of stopping there. But if he can develop a kind of more in depth pinching game into the offensive zone i think that you can get a really good offensive defenseman out of him and he's got a decent enough foundation of defensive skills too so that's one thing i really like about coglin vickman i haven't watched as much so i'll let you speak on that but i from what i've heard in, in the few games i've watched i've really liked what i've seen from him yeah uh vickman is is a player that i liked a lot towards the, the later stretch of the season uh yeah. with the viewings i got um the first few were fine but not exactly spectacular but as the year went on i was more and more impressed by his passing ability i thought that he he manages pressure quite well especially with back pressure on retrievals uh i think he plays a really projectable style uh defensively he's fine it's not in my view a separating skill yet which i think it yeah. would need to be for him to crack to, to really crack the nhl in, a, in an impactful role uh, but this is a type of two-way defenseman who I think does a lot of things really, really well. I I think if we're talking NHL comparables, I'd be thinking players like Brett Kulak, for instance, who are perhaps subtle in how they play the game, but are deadly effective and can really elevate good line mates as well. So he's a player I've, I've liked a lot for quite a while. And the last name I'll throw in, who I think is actually better than those defensemen, is Justin Sordiff. I think Sordiff is a really skilled player who has improved a ton since his draft year, which was what, 2021, I want to say, or 2020. But he's he's progressed a ton since then. Uh, the, the skill has been popping off a lot more consistently. Uh, and and he's he's a fun player. So I'll throw him in throw his name into that into that mix as well. But uh, there's a lot of players here that are fine, but don't 
like really, really impressed me too much. Guys like Jack Devine and Evan Nausa are good prospect pool filler players to have. But uh, if we're talking true NHL upside, probably restricted to bottom line, bottom pairing roles. Uh, but are there any other names that catch your eye here? The only name for me that puts them above the Vegas Golden Knights, because they have pretty similar prospect pools. For me, it's really uh, the the addition of Tyler Muselik from last year's draft. I think that that okay. is the separating factor because I don't see anyone in the Vegas. I mean, I, I, I like Cameron Whitehead. I don't like him as much as Tyler Muselik in terms of goaltender prospects. And that's a separating factor for me is on top of having Spencer Knight, who isn't a prospect anymore, but is very, very young and will probably be a, a major part of the Florida Panthers core for the next 10, 15 years. They've also got Tyler Muselik in the back pocket who could, he has the potential to be a starter. I really like what he brings to the game. I've loved this tape both internationally and in the, uh, and in the USHL. So there's a lot to like about Tyler Muselik. And I think that with enough time, you could develop him into a starting caliber goaltender. And if you have that as your backup, holy crap. I mean, <laughs> the Panthers will be well set up in net. Uh, so that's one guy that I would kind of put in that category. But other than that, there's a reason they're at 27. Uh, I think we Agreed. can both agree. Yeah. So that wraps things up for uh, today's episode. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you are if you like what you've been watching, make sure to like and subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, leave us a comment saying uh, what your favorite team is, who your favorite prospect is, and who you want us to talk about next. And if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, make sure to make us your first listen of the day. For your second listen of the day, make sure to check out Locked On Sports today. We've got all your updates and news about the recent sporting events, what's going on in the sporting world, so make sure to check them out. And make sure to tune in for our next episode this Friday, which will be about teams 26 through 24 again we're not going to be teasing them uh letting you know who those teams are you'll have to tune in for that well, this has been Hattie Kalakesh with Sebastian High and we hope you tune in next time